Hello friends, welcome to my channel Hobby Encyclopedia. Today we have uh, Mr. Anish Mehta of Bombay. He has a very good collection of banknotes and uh, today's interview will be related to his complete collection, the IBNS chapter and how it all started. So let's begin. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Anish Mehta. I've been born and brought up and still staying in Mumbai and uh, basically joined my family business when I was in college and we are basically having our own business and uh, which is of industrial machineries. Uh, at present we represent a few companies from Europe and have an office in Mumbai as well as in Singapore and uh, we sell these machineries from Europe into India, Asia and Africa uh, which allows me to do a lot of foreign travels uh, from last several years. Uh, unfortunately at the beginning of my uh, careers and all I was not a collector of banknotes or coins otherwise maybe I could have had a much better collection built up long time back. Uh, it was just in the year about 2013 or 14 where I got a little interest uh, into this field. Uh, we had, uh, we have a group of friends and we had met once and that time the topic was on Mumbai and coins and uh, basically of one rupees we tried to collect, we were seeing who has the maximum varieties. and. Uh, after that in the evening when I was trying to see back home what all I have compared to others and I realized that I have these coins much more than everybody else put together. Uh, I saw the next day there was an advertisement for an exhibition in Bombay uh, for these numismatic and um, that was the first time I went and visited the World Trade Center exhibition uh, to see what is there in this field. Uh, because of my extensive travel ab abroad, what happens is every time at the end of everybody's travels, you always have certain coins or notes which gets left over which you are not going to go back and exchange with the bank or the foreign exchange dealer. So. Uh, little by little there was a little collection which had already been built up plus there were certain old notes which I had got from my grandfather which were also with me and uh, after visiting this exhibition uh, for the first time at World Trade Center I realized that this field is quite large and uh, has got a lot of directions and a lot of areas of collection one can do. Uh, but of course the right way to approach or do any collections is always do step by step understanding what you are collecting and why you are collecting. So I decided okay, first I will do the Republic coins which I completed year wise for all the uh, years. Uh, uh, of course not mint wise but only year wise. Uh, that gave me an insight into this field and also got in uh, touch with a lot of dealers, started understanding how to deal with this industry and how to see that I don't get uh, you know carried away by paying a very high price for all the items which I purchase. Then I moved on to uh, the collection of uh, the Republic banknotes which I tried to initially collect uh, uh, on the signature basis and of course there were complete sets which were available but I decided to buy it loose which gets me an insight of individual pricings as well as gives me a little knowledge about what is available, who are the governors, what were the uh, areas of their uh, work etc. Also I had purchased a few of the books uh, at that particular time so that we know what we are buying and we don't miss out uh, on certain uh, notes or on the coins. Uh, 
the next step I went ahead and did was to start collecting these Republic banknotes on prefix wise. The 1 and 2 I completed the complete on prefix, uh, 5, 10 and 20 I completed about 60 or 65 percent perhaps around that range and then I had of course started moving on to uh, other bank notes so the focus had got a little distorted. Uh, I have uh, never been a collector of fancy bank notes. The only thing which I collect in the fancy bank notes is a set of 10 notes uh, of all uh, uh, common numbers like all ones, all twos up to uh, 1 million. So those 10 notes preferably with the same prefix of the same uh, note is what I collect and I have almost all denomination uh, sets of 10 of those notes. Uh, the older ones as well as the current ones. Subsequently, I moved on to the British notes which were expensive when I started. I think I must have started the British bank notes sometime in 2015-16. Uh, that time also the prices had already started moving up and I did collect uh, these notes. I started going on to doing it prefix wise certain uh, series I could complete prefix wise, certain I could not collect prefix wise especially because of the rarity and because of the expensive prices I was not excited to get into doing that uh, but almost all signatures, all types was something which I did collect. Uh, I did collect a few uniface notes but realized uniface is a very very large uh, areas of uh, signatures and prefixes and it would be very difficult for me to really achieve uh, deep into that particular field so I gave up the uniface uh, banknotes. Uh, I did all denominations up to 1000, 5000, 10,000 was not an area which I was focusing and that is the journey which I did for the Indian banknotes. Uh, once I did almost most of the pre prefix wise collection done, then I started realizing that I need to start looking at doing world banknotes because that will give me a more in depth uh, exposure of history and different uh, activities done around the world which is related war or economics has changed banknotes in various countries uh, which gets you a lot more knowledge and exposure uh, into uh, the banknote field as well as history. For the world as well as the Indian banknotes I don't do errors nor do I do uh, specimens. Uh, those are not an area which I work with. Uh, I have not done moguls or old coins. I have done uh, almost uh, year wise the whole uh, British coins. Also UNC proof sets almost all are completed except for the last few years when I have not been able to concentrate on that particular collection. Right from the earlier times uh, is been uh, there with me. Uh, then coming now to the World Bank notes, uh, do you want to stop and do the second one? Uh, coming now to my World Bank note collections, uh, World Bank note collection is a little more dramatic uh, starts and push in the collection because they are very specific and uh, very focused collection uh, unlike my Indian which was more like prefix and just all denominations uh, coming to the World Bank notes the current themes which I work with or have worked with uh, is uh, hyperinflation banknotes hyperinflation banknotes are banknotes with uh, denominations of 50,000 and above 
is what I collect. Uh, then I do overprint uh, banknotes. There's the second. Third is odd material, odd uh, denomination, odd shapes, odd concepts, banknotes. Uh, so after that, I also do is uncut sheets. Uh, of course, not of India, but uh, world. I do old ones. Uh, current uh, ones also uh, then is uh, the pre-1900 the year 1900 and before those are the banknotes which I also collect uh, recently about a few months back I started collecting banknotes from Tibet that I am trying to do on uh, prefix wise of course it's very difficult because the demand for that has really shot up a lot. Uh, now coming to each topic specifically, uh, before that uh, I never focused on buying or collecting one banknotes from each country or collecting banknotes from all countries uh, which I think a lot of collectors has been doing. Uh, I really wanted to do something different uh, that could be more interesting of course more difficult also but that's uh, good to do some challenge as well as to build up a knowledge base so one of the first uh, concept which I started was the hyperinflation banknotes uh, basically that was something like about 2016 2017 is the time when I started doing that um, the whole uh, logic being that you know it's always fancy to see banknotes with a lot of zeros on it and uh, that is one reason which inspired KS yes, that is something which could be interesting to be done uh, initially when I had not done in-depth study about it I felt there would be a f 100 or 200 or 300 banknotes uh, in this particular field which I could uh, do it in a short period and that could be an interesting collection. Um, it's about six, seven years now which I've been doing this collection. I have now about seven and a half thousand plus different banknotes of hyperinflation from about 50 countries plus. And I think the road is still very long and uh, a lot more can be collected uh, in this uh, so it's a huge ocean in this collection uh, there is a lot I have learned uh, in the process uh, when uh, every time I feel that I have gained a lot of knowledge on this and then when I talk to some collector or some good dealers overseas and he passes on certain more information about uh, the types within each of these uh, notes or different versions of those notes or you know different areas of uh, uh, where these notes can be added now this leads to a whole issue is that there is no data consolidated available for such uh, collections and uh, that makes a more challenging job for any of the collectors to do it I think hyperinflation notes becomes part of almost all World Bank note collectors in some form or the other always they would have some notes of a higher denomination into their collection whatever type of collection they would do uh, but this particular collection is only focused on these high denominations uh, of course, of all these, the highest country which had the uh, banknotes of this uh, range is Germany, uh, which also forms the bigger chunk of my collection. The highest denomination banknotes are, of course, from Hungary. Uh, we all feel that Zimbabwe has the highest uh, banknotes. Uh, or with the highest denominations but Hungary had the highest denomination banknotes uh, they come in uh, different sizes and shapes and different materials also 
uh, especially from Germany. You can get them on silk, uh, you can get them on uh, leather and jute, a lot of different uh, material also you would find uh, these hyperinflation banknotes. They are hyperinflation banknotes, they are a lot of them are even overprint uh, banknotes you could see uh, which are there in these hyperinflation banknotes. Uh, there were times when I had been to Germany because I deal with a lot of German companies and uh, uh, initially because I was not into these collections, I had seen a lot of these notes around in a lot of flea markets and uh, certain stores and all, but I had never bothered to look at it or buy those because that was not my focus hobby in those days. Uh, Lately, because of uh, various reasons, my travel to Germany has not been much, but whatever little I have done uh, has helped me to build up uh, some good contacts and some good relationships and uh, learned a lot on these notes there. A lot of the books written on these are there, but they are more on the uh, German language. Uh, so there are some books which I have got but now looking at doing it uh, a little differently. Uh, then the next collection, as I mentioned, was the overprint banknotes. Overprint banknotes are basically when you have an original banknote and there is something superseded on the banknote by either reprinting on it or you uh, putting a rubber stamp or an handwritten or any other mode uh, of uh, having something over printed or over script or over writing or writing on the banknotes. There are so many reasons for having an overprint. It could be uh, to increase the denominations or decrease the denominations. That could be because of change of the name of the bank, change of the name of the country. There could be a uh, change of individuals. There could be, uh, you know, cancellations and so many other factors because of which there has been overwritten on the banknotes. Uh, much, not much you would find them in the Indian banknotes because uh, we have not had uh, such drastic changes in history since the banknotes have uh, really been in the circulation in India. Uh, so this is a very different uh, type of a collection which I have done. Of course, this also you would find some banknotes or the other in many of the collection, but not seen many people uh, who does this as a focus theme. Uh, the uncut sheets which I do, yes, there are people who also collects uncut sheets. Uh, Uncut sheet uh, gave me a fancy only because of, you know, uh, it uh, looks so good to see how the actual printing has been done of the banknotes uh, before it was cut and made into bundles. That was the only excitement for me to get into that particular type of collection. And uh, even if you are doing some display, it could be very interesting for non-collector to see such uh, sheets. Then the next collection, as I mentioned, was the pre-1900s. Uh, that's a little difficult and a little more expensive uh, type of a collection uh, because not too many notes uh, available uh, around the world of those times. Uh, there are a lot of coins, of course, you would find, but not too many notes. So there has been uh, notes from various countries like France, uh, Russia, uh, of course, even in, even from India, uh, Peru, and a lot of other countries where I have these uh, notes in my collection, uh, which is interesting. And of course, you will never get them in a very good condition because they are very old. Uh, the oldest note in that collection, which I have, is of 1791. And the oldest banknote of India, which I have, is 1814 in that collection. Uh, the most, one of the very interesting 
note uh, collection which I have is the odd material and odd themes. Uh, this is very very different and uh, very unique uh, and of course very difficult to get uh, these uh, into your collection. Uh, within that I would put it at into different fractions. One is different materials. I have uh, with materials like jute, silk, uh, sole of the shoe, then it is there on wax, it is there on uh, polythene, uh, then on um, uh, what do you say foil, tissue papers uh, and various leather and various of these materials, wood, cardboard. Uh, also there would be a lot of, uh, of these banknotes, especially in the emergency time, which is printed on different type of documents. Uh, like I have it on postcards, I have it on coupons, I have it on the attendance uh, cards, I have on coupons of the supermarkets. Uh, on the packing materials and uh, on back of advertisements and various such uh, documents. Also, there are different shapes of the uh, banknotes which may be done as uh, for the fancy to collect or various other reasons. They are in square, shape, oval, round uh, and a lot of other shapes which are there. Uh, of course, in stamps you would find much more shapes and much more varieties, but in banknotes also you have these uh, which are there. Uh, then there are some mixed denominations where there would be uh, sort of a coupon where there would be two or three banknotes clubbed together and which could be toned like a coupon and uh, used. Uh, there would be fractional banknotes, there would be uh, or denomination banknotes of various denominations. Uh, these all form part of uh, the uh, odd materials or odd type of uh, uh, banknotes. Uh, there are so many times uh, when you are on a shop or especially on a flea market, you know, the uh, good collectors you interact with, especially on a flea market. They are collectors who take stands and try to sell their collections uh, because either they would like to move on to some other collections or they have reached an age where they would like to encash that uh, for their family. And when you start hearing stories of how they have got and how they have uh, collected, it's very interesting and that gives you a very good twist in your collections. Friends, the another very important issue is of a collector, which one should do is share the knowledge, uh, which I feel in lot of hobbies uh, that is lacking, uh, not only in India, but around the world. Uh, I, when I started doing my collections, I had, uh, once I reached a particular level of collection, I started uh, promoting to do uh, live webinars. Uh, I have done a few uh, live webinars on various of my collections. I have also uh, done a uh, lot of exhibitions, lot of displays uh, in a uh, <coughs> lot of exhibitions, lot of institutes. Uh, I have done it in schools. Uh, to, and talk to uh, commerce students about the collections. I have um, also given a lot of presentations during exhibitions, uh, during um, uh, meets, uh, during collectors meets, uh, during uh, the numismatic society meets. I have done uh, related with my uh, collection because that's where the maximum knowledge one would gain. Um, I would always recommend uh, uh, different collectors that if they are able to do the same, that will enable uh, promotion of the hobby, it will pass on knowledge, it will guide the various collectors to do a good job on their uh, collection. 
Uh, I have also written a book on one of my collection, which is hyperinflation. Uh, that was just a small booklet, basically giving uh, certain information about hyperinflation and copy, uh, photos or videos of my banknotes. This was basically to uh, promote to kids and uh, non-collectors uh, about uh, the collection and uh, try to give them a boost to look into doing similar collections. Uh, we uh, do a lot of these uh, and whenever I travel also we try to uh, undertake certain displays or even try to have meetings with various collectors in that areas where we could exchange information, knowledge, contacts which can build up uh, my own collections also and perhaps uh, the collections of the people whom I meet also. There has been uh, collectors who has reverted back to me uh, on two issues. One is uh, you know, informing me okay, how they have improved their collection because of the uh, knowledge which I have imparted and also some senior people have come back to me giving me little more information on the collection which I didn't have or even perhaps uh, correcting something which I have mentioned which is perhaps not the perfect information by which I am improving my own knowledge and Im improving uh, the type of collection which I do. This is a process which I have started uh, for all the uh, collective themes which I do and would always recommend all other fellow collectors to do the same.